Okay, welcome everyone to this continuation of what are my favorite theorems, my very biased collection as usual. And today I would like to talk about something that is really fun. So we are counting a certain appearances of else's in the certain function that I call the else function. It usually has a different name, but I call it the else function. And well, I would like to play a game with you. So you all know how the game works. Um, as soon as I wrote down a few numbers, I would like you to guess the next number. So we start off with 104, 14, 53, and what is the next number? Tja, how do you figure that out? Well, the next one question. So I hope you will not get this in an interview because it's like really difficult to figure that out. Um, but the way I would figure this out is I would just open the, the online integer sequence. We can actually do that together. So online integer sequences, and I just would put it in. Um, so 0, 1, 4, 14, 53, and I had a typo before, I had a 15 before, so very subtle here, and didn't find it, so let's hope that it will find the correct one. Um, yeah, running time of Takeuchi function, so the real name, or the usual name, of what I call the Elsh function is uh, called the Takeuchi function, and the next number is 223, and we'll, we'll actually see, we'll actually see what's going on. Um, anyway, so stay with me here. It's kind of a fun, kind of a fun little exercise in, well, not really an exercise, kind of a, uh, a thinking exercise, if you want, a thought experiment, whatever you want to call it, because it's related to something really cool, something I really like, and I kind of feel like, feel like it's a lot of un really underrated in mathematics, which is this concept of recursion. So what I really should have done, um, but I was too lazy to do it, I should have taken kind of a, kind of a previous video, and then put the video into the video. That's like recursion. Um, nowadays, this is kind of well known, so I decided I'm too lazy to do it. But anyway, so recursion is if you have something in itself, yeah, like those matryoshka dolls, there's a doll in a doll in a doll in a doll in a doll, you know? And that's recursion. And it's like a really, really powerful concept that computer scientists love and know very well. And some mathematicians, they also know it and they also love it, but it's somewhat a bit ignored. Um, and I'm very sad about that because it's it's really cool actually. So recursion is something that calls itself. The the prime example of recursion is a factorial. So there are two ways to define a factorial and factorial. We can do the silly way, like one times two times three, dot 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 times n, which is kind of the silly way of doing it. And that's usually what you see. It's very sad. Or you can do it in the recursion way, which is much more fun actually. So you can just say, okay, we have some starting value, f of zero is one. By definition, whatever, and then it just calls itself. So if you want to know f of n, then n times f of n minus one. Uh, yeah. So the factorial and recursion, and recursion is usually very efficient. So a lot of functions are much better to compute in, in recursion, and I would really like to see that way more often. As I said, computer scientists love that and do that all the time, but some mathematician mathematicians like the co the converse, the inverse of recursion much more, which is induction. Kind of recursion is the, the, the inverse if you want and yeah it's super efficient and oh it, it's fantastic i love recursion oh recursion i i can recurse now recursion uh, because i love it so much i hope this is kind of clear something that calls itself like a doll in a doll in a doll or the function that calls itself calls itself calls itself calls itself and yeah people like that a lot and tak this not not quite mathematician but the person takeuchi came up with a with a kind of a fun function that I call the else function. So whenever you do some programming and you're doing some maybe not very good programming, like like me, then you have a lot of if then else things. Because that's usually saying that you don't know you don't know how to really do it. So you just do an if then else. And this function, this this else function, um just makes this this whole idea and, and takes this whole idea and just pushes it to an unbelievable extent. So the else function comes in three variables. And it essentially only calls itself all the time. And it only invokes else all the time. So the precise value doesn't really matter, but it works as follows. Else of x, y, z, how would you compute that? Well, if x is smaller than z, then you just return y. Okay, that's kind of the good case. And if that doesn't happen, then you get into this little recursion, in a recursion, in a recursion, where you always invoke else all the time. So here's our else. And yeah, you just call the function itself three times on kind of permuted values. It's completely insane. This function is completely insane. It just calls else all the time. Essentially, the only thing it does is it calls else. That's kind of fun. And in the end, you get some output. 
is really interesting. So this, um, so here's the person I mentioned, Taki Ushi, not quite a mathematician, was working for Nippon Telephone and Telegraph and Co. in 78, and has this paper, which is a fun title, uh, on a recursive function that does almost recursion only. This <laughs> kind of this function is insane. Um, yeah, so they're called the Taki Ushi numbers. We had this little, this is really a little bit small, but we actually had that. I can just pull it up again. It's really just here, Taki Ushi numbers. So zero, whatever it is up to uh, 14. And we define them as follows. It, as I said, the, this, this else function doesn't really matter. So the output of the else function doesn't really matter. But we, what we want to know is what is called usually called capital T. It's the number of times we use else while evaluating that function. And you get a sequence from it just in this case. So for example, T2 should be four. Let's pull up our thing again here. Uh, 0, 1, 2, 2 should be 4. I'm not doing 14 for you. If you want to do 14 by hand, good luck. <laughs> this gets a little bit annoying. I probably have a typo here already for 2, but as you can see, there are a lot of L's. I counted 4 L's. 1, 2, 3, 4. It actually works as follows. So you want to know L's of 2, 0, 3. And, well, let's go back. This condition is not satisfied, and then, then you are in this else loop, which just never really stops. It, at one point it stops, but it feels like it will never stop. So what you do is you subtract one and call the else function in the first entry. You um, put this one at the end. So you just put this one here, subtract one from the first one. This is this one. And there's another way of doing it. You put it here. So you just cyclically shift it and subtract and run this silly thing again. And yeah, so this one still needs some, some massaging because one is not bigger, smaller than two. This one is, is good and this one is good. They just spit out the middle number, whatever. And then you still need to do this. So you need to do this. And you still need to do this one and you still need to do this one and you still need to do this one and you need to, ah, oh. and it just continues. Uh, just for this silly value of, of t equals two, you get to like four recursions or four else's already. This is just very insane. It's just a lot of fun. Don't do it. Don't, don't try to. Oh, actually, the next case is actually still a lot of fun. But don't try to do this by hand too much. Um, that's not the point. But essentially, it's kind of a fun function. That is a recursion only. And what is really interesting here is that you would like to know how often recursion, or how often the else roughly appears. So Tn is the number of else's. And it roughly appears like very often. Um, so if you know what the bell numbers are, the bell numbers grow very fast. I will come back to those in a second. Uh, just for this video, I could have done, I could have been more precise. Just for this video, I decided they grow faster than exponential of n. So they grow faster than, that's faster than exponential grows. So that's very fast. Um, this is just a constant. I'm pretty sure not much is known about the constant, but you can ignore it. So for example, I don't even know a nice formula for that constant. And I want it just to be precise, so I put this guy here as well, but just ignore it. It just it essentially does nothing. We'll run that in a second. There's this what is called Lambert's W function, which which you could think of as being a log. So a log does nothing. So here x of log squared should be roughly n squared. Compared to the more than exponential growth of the bell numbers, you can just ignore that guy. So essentially it boils down to just knowing those little numbers here. And they grow like devilishly fast. So I decided to put a little bit of this into Mathematica, just just for fun. Um, it's not it's not very deep code or difficult code. So um, the, just to com convince you that this W function is harmless, harmless. It's also sometimes called a prod lock. So it doesn't grow very fast. So the prod lock of 100 is roughly 3.38. Five six three. That that's not not not, not a lot. And so this term x of one half, whatever, that appears there, it, it still doesn't grow very fast. So at 100, it's roughly 300. So I plotted it against uh, n to the 1.4. So this is this, this second term here. So the blue line is, is this term. Uh, maybe I should do it in blue. So the blue line is the blue term. Um, I just want to say this is slow. We don't care. Uh, compared to the rest. It's not really slow, but it's slow compared to the rest. So here, for example, n to the 1.4, yeah, it, it's not it's not that exciting fast. Okay, so you can kind of ignore this guy. Ignore it, then we ignore the constant anyway. And then the bell numbers, 
Um, there is an asymptotic formula for the bell numbers, uh, so bell numbers, but it's a little bit, it's a little bit awful. So I decided not to pull it up. So it should be on Wikipedia. I'm doing this live now. Let's hope it is on Wikipedia. So let's see the bell numbers, blah blah blah, related to set partitions, and I'm pretty sure there should be some. Ah, there you go, some asymptotic formula. So there's this W function again. So here's an n to the n if you want, an n over log n to the n. That's pretty fast. It should go faster than any exponential. So I just did that. So bell number divided by exponential. And at the hundredth step, I mean, the bell number is much more, smart, faster, uh, much, much larger. So at the hundredth step, this is the ratio, bell divided by exponential. So it's much faster. And it will outgrow essentially any exponential. So it could also put you a 10 to the n or something. Uh, let's see what happens. Evaluate. Um, yeah, so at the hundred step, it's already much, much larger anyway. Okay, so the whole asymptotics comes from, from this guy here, essentially, up to some fluctuations, some constants, and it's very fast. So there are a lot of, a lot of L's involved, more than exponentially many L's. It's kind of a fun function. Um, anyway, so this came actually in this paper that I showed you, or the paper, I actually never saw this paper anywhere because it's kind of difficult to get. To get. It's published in Nippon Telephone Telegraph Co. Tokyo, 1978. No idea how to get that. But anyway, it was uh, invented to compare speeds of programming languages, essentially, because this function has something funny going on. It runs a long time. Yeah? It can really run a long time because it always involves so many else's. Right, we just did this analysis here. It involves like exponentially more than exponentially many else's. So it's like really, really fast. But on the other hand, it's not not needing a lot of memory because it never crunches large numbers or anything like that. It's kind of a fun, fun thing, right? You can do a very long calculation without crunching large numbers or anything. Not happening here. <laughs> it just it just has a recursion that essentially never ends. And it's kind of a fun, kind of a fun thing, and it's kind of you could test it. Uh, what kind of the speed of various programming languages again simply because it doesn't use much memory and still runs uh, for a long time anyway i hope you enjoyed this video and i also hope to see you next time